Hello there, Mad Mug here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and today I thought I'd make uh, a little bit of a fun video. Uh, I, not really too, too much news going on again, um, and we didn't wind up doing rifts tonight. Um, we will, again, try to get to that uh, before the month is out. Like I said, next month we are still planning the Star Wars month, so we're going to see how that's going to work itself out. Um, I still need to go over some of that information before we finalize some things. Uh, so... I thought it would be a fun idea to give five comic book plot lines that I don't think have been either A, successfully adapted, or B, adapted at all to film, um, and why I think that maybe these things would be interesting to see on film compared to what we have currently been getting uh, from you know Warner Brothers and Marvel and various other studios with comic book properties. Um, now, not all of these, a, a few of them fall under the big two, but not all of them. Um, some of them are sub-companies and stuff like that, like Vertigo, uh, which is basically which is a sub-company of DC. But um, after that, let's just get into the numbers. And at number five, uh, we have D The Dark Knight Returns. Now, I know we had a version of this kind of in Batman v Superman, um, but it doesn't really, that version doesn't really hold water, and obviously it is nowhere even close to the comic version. Now, this is, this is my favorite Batman comic. I know that's very cliche to say for people who are Batman fans, but I really do like The Dark Knight Returns more than I like any other Batman comic. Um, you know, and again, there's a plethora of good ones. You have uh, Batman Hush, that whole arc uh, from the comics. You have um, The Killing Joke. You have Year One. I mean, it, there, there's so many great Batman stories in comic form. Um, and, you know, Dark Knight Returns just really hasn't been done in a live-action format in its entirety. And I think maybe uh, with them starting to go, with Warner Brothers starting to go a bit more with the standalone films, like what Matt Reeves is doing with the new Batman film, um, they might try some of these little one-shots. And I think that's that's kind of a good thing for DC, because it, it separates them quite a bit from Marvel, even though they still do have kind of a semi-continuity with certain films. Um, I think it is good to branch out with stuff like the Batman and stuff like Joker, uh, because it does keep stuff fresh, and I'd like to see an R-rated version of Dark Knight Returns. Um, and again, yeah, also, we, we did kind of see bits and pieces of it, too, with uh, Dark Knight Rises, but eh, not, not, not really. I mean, they, they took story elements, but it wasn't anywhere close to the aesthetic uh, that you had with the comic book and the kind of idea you had of the world that they were in, because that's the other thing, is I think it should be a period piece, I think it should take place in the 1980s like the comic book did, um, because I think that you you should make, a, for Dark Knight Returns, I feel like, aside from maybe the political commentary, maybe you can edit that out, because that, again, that's kind of, uh, that's from the time, basically, um, but aside from that, I think you should keep what you had in the original and just adapt it, kind of like what they did with the animated feature, where they wound up splitting it into two parts, um, but I would really like to see it adapted to film how it was in the comic as opposed to, you know, the, the liberties they've been taking with it over time. But uh, that that's kind of a plain one, you know, that's one that a lot of people can probably, uh, probably think of. The next one is just, I want to see it on screen for the batshit insanity. Um, and number four is Wanted. Now, the original Wanted comp book, uh, comic book, which was done by Mark Millar, um, is completely batshit insane. Uh, it's nowhere even close to the, anything that happened in the movie. The movie, uh, basically, other than taking some character names and some kind of j very general premises, um, they basically only took the name and did it from there. Aside from that, the movie has nothing to do with the comic book that it's licensed out of. Um, and I would really like to see a version of that, because it's so batshit insane. Um, and again, that comes from, uh, I think that comes from Top Cow, I believe, that imprint of comics. I don't know if that's still around or if that's a subsidy of another company. Um, but Wanted was one of those stories that was just completely nuts. I mean, you, you had a guy, you had a villain that was literally made out of human feces. He was a walking shit monster. Uh, you had, you know, guys that, that looked horrifying. You had a mentally retarded version of Superman. Uh, who you, he, they basically, they're Bizarro lookalike. Um, I mean, they, they had, uh, this guy named Johnny Two Dicks who had a second member that talked and could partially control his body. Uh, there is so much, I, I want to know what Mark Miller was on 
when he he did that comic. I really do. I mean, I know I've read some other stuff too, like Ultimates and, and things like that. But like, and uh, Old Man Logan and things. But that is a whole other level of batshit crazy. Like that was Mark Millar just being allowed to do something and just put it on paper exactly how it was in his brain. It didn't have to make sense. I mean, the the opening starts out with um, Wesley Gibson's father, the the killer. He starts out with him filming two men having sex just because it spices things up every once in a while, and he videotaped it so he could jack off to it later. Um, it it's it's a it's bizarre. It's weird. It's hyper violent. It's hyper sexual. Um, it it reminds me a lot of you know taking kind of like a balls-to-the-wall action movie, like a, a Commando or something like that, but, but taking it to the point where it was so goofy and campy like an old-fashioned comic book. It's just, it's such a strange book to read. I would recommend reading it, though. I love the I love the comic. I really do. Um, the only thing you got to kind of get past is the, uh, the models that uh, the artist used for uh, Wesley Gibson, the main character, and uh, the fox... Uh, what are Eminem and Halle Berry, respectively? So you're basically watching Eminem murder people for you know 150 pages, or uh, whatever the the comic wound up being. It might have, and it was probably a lot shorter than that. But the uh, I think it it would be a fun thing, you know. Just make it rated R. Just go balls to the wall again. You know, it, it's an imprint that I don't know who technically owns the rights to that. I think Fox might have, so it's under Disney now. So that's kind of unfortunate again assuming they still own the rights but Disney might also dump those because it's one of those uh, one of those things where they're not going to make money off of it because they're never going to make the movie of it um, so but that is a movie I would like to see now the next one does come out of Disney and this one has actually been kicking around the rumor mill pretty hard for the last six months and that is a Hulk versus Wolverine movie now Mark Ruffalo has been vocal about wanting to come back and reprise his role the Hulk and maybe a film that takes place before Endgame uh, at some point in that timeline. So I think there's plenty of room there where you could have a Hulk versus Wolverine. And there were two different instances in the comic books where they did this. One of them was the Wolverine's introduction uh, where he, he battles Hulk and then they both battle uh, the villain Wendigo. And then later on, obviously they go, you know, they go back, they go toe to toe a few more times during the comic books and the main continuity. And they also did a Hulk versus Wolverine comic um, in the Ultimate Universe, and I don't remember if that was done by Mark Millar. I don't think it was, even though it was the Hulk from um, the Ultimates, which was his book. Uh, but they they did some interesting stuff in that. I would like to see an adaptation of the Ultimate one, because I think that that has a more solid story for a standalone. And this would also give you a good way to introduce audiences to the new Wolverine before you went full-on into your rebooted X-Men franchises. So I, I think that would probably be a good idea. And then on top of that, you also get Mark Ruffalo back, who a lot of audiences really like him. I'm kind of lukewarm on him at this point. I really liked him in the beginning. I loved him in Avengers. I thought he was perfect in that. But then he started getting more, less and less serious um, until we get to the point where we're in Endgame and he, he's literally just, you know, it, it's a CGI him just speaking through Hulk, which I think kind of defeats the purpose to an extent. Um, but it would be nice to see maybe uh, some some kind of continuation of that. Or, you know, again, since Marvel really can't use him outside of team-up films, this would also work for them as well because of the contract they have with Universal. Um, so, again, that's kind of, you know, a, a fairly obvious one, kind of like Dark Knight Returns. Uh, the next one is not as obvious, but it's one that I think is well overdue for some kind of a, a uh, you know, a television or a movie uh, rebooting or, or uh, adaptation, and that's uh, Bill Wellingham's Fables comic book. Now, specifically, I'm talking about kind of the earlier stories, the uh, the, the more detective noir type of stuff uh, with Bigby Wolf and Snow White and all those characters, or even adapting uh, some of the stories that were done from the Telltale game in there. Um, but the thing is, Fables, I feel like that would work very well as a television series. Um, it has the ability to kind of carry that on. You have characters that carry on. It's not really, 
you know, maybe start out with a movie, do do a movie, and then get some hype up, and then transition over into a television show or something like that, and or maybe have a movie pop up every once in a while. Again, I'm not a hundred percent sure who owns the actual film rights to Fables, but um, it, it's a story that's interesting. It takes a hard-boiled detective story and puts it in a world of you know. F- fantasy characters and stuff like that that are all kind of, uh, you know, public domain type of stuff, like Big Bad Wolf, obviously. But I love Fables. Um, I love The Wolf Among Us. It's my favorite Telltale game, and I do love a lot of Telltale games. Yeah, I do like a lot of Telltale's games. Uh, you know, Tales, uh, Tales from the Borderlands, the earlier seasons of The Walking Dead game. Um, but, you know, looking back now, uh, you know, I think it's well overdue because there were, there was a point in time uh, you know, around the time the Game of Thrones and stuff was coming out, that a lot of fantasy-related stuff was starting to get, you know, more heavily into uh, into into the culture. And Fables is kind of again one of those things that I think it got looked over a little bit more. It's it's a lot like some other series that have kind of similar premises, but it does stand out because I love the character of Bigby Wolf. Um, you know, he. The, the idea of him is very, is very interesting. And then on top of that, translating that over into a television show would probably be a good idea. You know, because you can carry that hard-boiled detective story on for episode after episode after episode. And as long as you have good writing, you can keep it interesting. Again, aim it for adults. Don't aim it, you know, don't dumb it down and aim it at kids. Aim it for adults, you know. Don't, you know, take the, the, the material actually seriously. Uh, and and treat it seriously and treat them like actual characters because I think that's what really draws people into series like that. Um, but yeah, that's Fables. And then my last one, which again, we're going back to DC, but this is kind of one that I think that maybe could, uh, could be coming up in the future uh, if the Robert Pattinson film winds up getting sequels. Um, and that is Death in the Family. Um, and Death in the Family is basically the story of how the second Robin, Jason Todd, is murdered by the Joker, um, and the various things that go along with that. And I think you could do that because there's really, there's not a lot of Batman stories where Batman really loses in the end. And that is one where he, he 100% loses. You know, you you can't even argue it. He loses because because Jason Todd is killed, and you know it it, it was a child basically that he had, uh, you know he had supervision over for whatever you know amount of time, and uh, you know he was his responsibility, and he he also thought of Jason, you know, like he did with uh, you know Dick Grayson, and then uh, Jason Todd. Uh, well, sorry, yeah, Dick Gra- Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, and then you know his own son later on, Damian Wayne. Did the idea that you know they're all his sons basically. Um, so it's kind of like that of a parent losing a child. Um, but it's something that we haven't seen on screen before, because the thing is, we've seen deaths in Batman films, you know, the Nolan trilogy, you see, you know, uh, Rachel Dawes gets, gets murdered in Dark Knight, um, you know, a bunch of other stuff, and, you know, some of the villains, you, you know, get, uh, get murdered, Liam Neeson, di- uh, Ra's al Ghul dies in Batman Begins, um, same thing, Joker dies in the original, uh, 89 Batman with Keaton. So there's been death in Batman films before, but the thing is, we've never really seen a member of the Bat family, um, get killed on screen. Uh, and I think if you did it in somewhat of a serious sense when you, you know, like if you had, uh, if you took it kind of in the same light that Arkham Knight did, where it was this very kind of brutal, like, drawn-out torture, and the Joker's just screwing with Batman the whole time and just destroying his hopes and dreams. And it's one of those things where, you know, it is a well-known story, you know, so the public is probably not going to be too in the dark about it. You might be able to fool some of the normies near the end. But the thing, again, the thing is, in those movies, Batman really doesn't wind up in the bottom at the end of the film. You know, other than the Dark Knight, really, and even the Dark Knight, Batman still kind of wins the day, almost in a sense, because he, you know, they they really don't start experiencing problems until Dark Knight Rises, at least in Gotham. Until then, when when Bane shows up, so he really kind of he still wins in the end, even though he's basically kind of driven out of the city and stuff, and everybody thinks he murdered a bunch of people. Um, but he ultimately accomplished his goal. In if you were to adapt something like this, where the ending 
is the death of Jason Todd, then Batman did not reach his goal. Batman was defeated. And there, you know, there's no coming back because he's dead. Now, obviously, it's a it's a based off of a comic book. So, you know, at the, some point in the comic books, Jason Todd does come back to life and becomes Red Hood and all that stuff. But, you know, you could also do that, too, because um, Under, Under the Red Hood is another really good story from Batman that could then come out of this. Uh, but at the same time, I'm aware that, you know, because of Matt Reeves' Batman, they may jump around and do standalones. And again, this would be a fun standalone to do or, you know, a sequel to that one because this is supposed to be Batman, uh, the Matt Reeves one is supposed to be Batman in his early days. Uh, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, that maybe the next one, maybe he'll have Robin or maybe Robin will get introduced at the end of this uh, this iteration's films, and then then the next one, you know, you you warm up to him, and then halfway through he gets kidnapped and then murdered and stuff like that. So, you you could do that. You could do that from a timeline perspective, and I think that would probably be a smart choice by them because that's a story that really hasn't been adapted to screen. At the same time, they're also going to have to commit to the idea of uh, you know basically murdering a child on screen. Um, but again, you know, slasher movies have been doing that for years. But the uh, but. At the same time, that those are my suggestions. I want to know if you have any suggestions of uh, comic book uh, storylines or arcs or any kind of graphic novels or anything from comic books that you would like to see adapted to screen. Now that we're kind of getting to the point where you know the the basics are already laid out there, you know they have the the, the Marvel formula and all that bullshit, and people are starting to branch out a little bit more, um, you know. And like I, like I said, I like to read them, so again, put them in the comments below. Uh, hit the bell for notifications, hit the like button, subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?